Welcome to the French Fashion Doll Party. In the year 2006, at the Toy and Miniature Museum of Kansas City, over 160 French fashion dolls joined together from all over the United States of America to put on the party of the year. Let's take a little peek in the special exhibit gallery. Ah, there's the Hurays. Look to the right. Don't miss this fabulous Impressionist painting. More Hurays with Trousseau's Ooh la la. Oh, and there they are, all the ladies and gentlemen. The opulent era case. There they are, swagged, festooned, draped, tucked, and buttoned. Dolls from around the world. And look to the right, a World Exposition Chameau. But we're going to start at the beginning. And in the beginning, there was Adam. Adam is a first generation China Hure. Completely original in his little boy suit. This is something that you don't see every day. Most Hures are little girls. Look at the wonderful tailoring on his suit. An amazing China face. This was a special item to have the original Hure bronze medal from 1855. We can't forget Eve. Eve is the first generation bisque Hure. Made with the same mold as the China, very few of these were made. Look at the first designer shoes in history, marked Hure et Perry. Ah, and here's a treasure, a Hure with an open mouth with teeth and a tongue tip, housed in her original box with a wonderful original costume. Her name is Magdalena. The Hure Company, long before they made dolls, made furniture. So it was natural that they made furniture for dolls. Here's a wonderful Hure Jardinier. One of the rarest things in the world when it comes to Hure. In this early illustration, we can see on the far right, there is a Hure Jardinier. And of course, the table and chairs. And these are some of the earliest illustrations of the Hure doll. Shall we look at swivel neck dolls now? This is one of the most beautiful Hure costumes. And this swivel neck Hure is very lucky to have it. Stop and look at all the details. These are not things that you find every day on a Hure frock. And the swivel necks had the wonderful eyes. We'll look at another swivel neck. Here you can see a totally different look, different type of wig, and a wonderful costume with rows and rows of flounces, pagoda sleeves, and a wonderful little capelet with wonderful trim. Dreamy is something that is associated with the Hire doll. Let's look at the glass-eyed Hure. 
All companies, including the Hire sisters, had to follow trends. And as the painted eye became passe, the glass eye became all the rage. And they created their item with the same head mold with just glass eyes. And they're just as lovely as the painted. This doll had a particularly charming outfit in silk, window pane, black and white, and pink. Very charming. In this special exhibit, there were many separate costumes, including this wonderful file and soutache trimmed suit. There was also this printed file, something that we don't see every day, with wonderful trim and lots and lots of buttons. The French fashion exhibit was loaded with all kinds of accessories, everything that a French fashion doll would need. For travel, we had a display of wonderful sac de voyages from three inches tall to eight inches tall. We could say that the French fashion doll is the only surviving carpetbagger living today. Ah, sometimes girls' hands are cold, so they would have these wonderful muffs. The exhibit had muffs in just about every material you could think of. Before we head into the main gallery, let's just have a close-up look at this wonderful impressionist painting of the doll dealer. Note that the girls looking at the dolls are scullery maids, and they're basically wearing rags. Many of the dolls on the table we would call wax over paper machés, but there are also many that were French fashion dolls. Now we're in the main gallery, and we should look at Mademoiselle Lucy. Many of you know Mademoiselle Lucy. She is very blessed to have a wardrobe of clothes that have many, many marked here costumes, hats, shoes, etc. Lucy is a bisque shoulder head here with the second mold of the shoulder head. Very, very pouty and expressive. Lucy's blessed to have a wardrobe of clothes and many, many of her items are soutache trim. such as this Figaro jacket and skirt. She has many hats, such as this chapeau niçoise that coordinates with the silk and soutache frock. And a very intense file and soutache dress she has many, many items trimmed in red, so it's safe to say that red is one of her favorite colors. Accessories. Literally, Lucy has over 100 accessories. She's very blessed. And if she needs to write a thank you note for the latest gift, she has all kinds of implements for writing letters. She also spends a lot of time reading. Evidently, Shakespeare is one of her favorites. I love her little compass that's in that little red box. Ah, but everybody loves these green boxes with those wonderful stamps. Maison Hire. This is one of my favorite outfits in Lucy's collection. It's her carnival costume, fancy dress, when she pretends she's Mademoiselle Paris Chanel and the very rare mask. Blonde lace, who can resist? Whites, white work, and her fabulous little boutines. 
all hand embroidered. And Lucy's a doll girl, so she has her own set of paper dolls. Um, sometimes she's lazy, and she has a wonderful hammock for those summer days. Shall we move on? Mirror, mirror on the wall, who's the rarest hooray of all? Well, it's you, Yvonne. Yvonne is a swivel-necked hooray, but she has a little secret. She is a rod-necked hooray, meaning that she has a porcelain rod that's attached to her neck that goes into her body. She has no bisque shoulder plate. Obviously, children played rough with them, so very few of them have survived. Yvonne has a wonderful wardrobe of clothing for every occasion. Play dresses, party dresses, every season. A wonderful check with a chapeau niçoise made out of straw trimmed with Chantilly lace. So rare. Ah, one of my favorites in her collection, this file and soutache dress. So simple, but so effective. Try doing this at home. Not so easy. Look at those tiny stitches. The Bluebird of Happiness dress. Again, very simple, but very unique to the Hure Company. Classic whites trimmed in rickrack. Ah, here's Yvonne's original owner from long ago. White work all the underpinnings that are needed to make the dresses look perfect. Yvonne even has her own table and chair. Hure, of course. Sewing necessaires. Teeny tiny items. This is one of my favorite dresses in her collection. It's a gauze party dress trimmed in coral velvet. Look at those shoes. She's royal. She has red heels. Marked Hure et Paris. Oh boy, does Yvonne have accessories. A face screen, binoculars, fans for cooling and flirting. A beaded collar, a wonderful pink parasol. Ah, look at that muff. Fairy penguin. Very soft and delicate. Hats. She has hats for every ensemble. And on cold days, she has mittens. Who doesn't love a pair of wonderful red shoes and tartan wear? Beautiful embroidered slippers, red stockings, and nighttime boutines. White work, essential in a Hure trousseau. And of course, who doesn't love a nice mini print? Yvonne was a success. Mademoiselle Barreau, a legendary name in the 19th century for doll costuming. This lady also, besides supplying costumes to the Hure Company, she also owned her own company. And this is one of her products. This is a tiny doll, under 12 inches tall, 
but her wardrobe has all of the characteristics of a large doll's wardrobe. Note the little bird on the cap, one of her signature pieces. This wonderful dress was also found in the size to fit a hire, proving that Mademoiselle Barreau made this dress. Lavinia has all kinds of wonderful accessories that were obviously mostly bought at Mademoiselle Barreau's shop, but she also probably bought things elsewhere. One very interesting thing about this doll is she was a gift from the world-famous opera star Adelina Patti to a little girl long ago. Note the dress with the marabou trim. She was just a delight. Speaking of delights, let's look at Mademoiselle Clement. In the 19th century, when the doll boom was going at its full force, everyone wanted into the action. Pierre Vector Clement was a shoemaker, and he developed the blown kid body. Obviously, he had the skill from making shoes to utilize it into making dolls. This is a very small Clement, under 14 inches. She's as light as a feather. Let's move on to Maison Romer. Ah, Mademoiselle Renée. Mademoiselle Renée made her debut at the Toy and Miniature Museum. She's now in their permanent collection. She's a china shoulder head. She has her own little dolls. Not just one, she has two. Maybe three. Yep, she has three. Mademoiselle Renee, she is a lady doll. Romers were dressed as both girls and ladies. She has a wonderful trousseau of clothing, including the seaside costume a wonderful little mini stripe with rickrack, which is one of the signature decorations of a Romer costume. Mademoiselle Renee has many accessories, including this wonderful necessaire with a button hook for her boots, a powder jar, wonderful hats. The Romer company were very talented when it came to headwear. She has a little wonderful purse, a lorgnette, hanging bags, perfumes, and practical furniture. Not all French fashions had fancy furniture. And for the rainy days, a pair of rubber shoes. Picnics part of 19th century life, and a whistle, jump rope, gloves. You can visit Renee anytime at the Toy and Miniature Museum of Kansas City. She would be delighted to make your acquaintance. Moving on, let's have a visit with Mademoiselle Mignon. Ah. We know her name is Mignon because she has her calling card that says Mademoiselle Mignon. She is a bisque swivel neck with blue painted eyes. A wonderful trousseau of clothing. At a 14 inch size, she's a petite roamer. Stunning silk slippers. A beautiful pink and black ensemble, all handmade. Very simple, but effective. Painted hats. This is straw that's been painted. Midnight blue and black, a very popular color combination in the 1860s. Ah, a picnic dress. 
in Bismarck Brown and Tartanware. Very unusual combination. Note the collar. That's a little different. Renee is housed in her trunk with all her wonderful white work. And nightwear, too. Mademoiselle Violetta. Mademoiselle Violetta is an 18-inch bisque roamer with painted eyes and a swivel neck. Look at those beautiful eyes. Beautifully painted. She has a wonderful wardrobe of clothing, but what is really fascinating about this great piece is that she has two bathing costumes. Who doesn't love a beautiful mini print? The Romer Company were known for their wonderful little mini prints. Ah, and accessories. She has wonderful accessories, such as this lotto game, a wonderful sewing basket. She can be visited anytime at the Toy and Miniature Museum. Go say hello. Mademoiselle Fifi. Oh, talk about attitude. Mademoiselle Fifi is a bisque swivel neck. She is perhaps the poutiest French fashion doll ever made. She is a character doll before there was such a thing as a character doll. She has a wonderful wardrobe of many costumes and accessories, but obviously she is dissatisfied. She makes me laugh. Fuchsia and black, wonderful mini prints, black and blue. We'd love to spend more time with her, but we have more dolls to look at. Ah, a glass-eyed roamer. Mademoiselle Antoinette. She is pouty, but not as pouty as the doll we just looked at. Her trousseau has many pieces of tartanware, and obviously her favorite color is the color red. Who doesn't love red? She's ready for Christmas, 365 days of the year. Note her wonderful little Figaro jacket on the right with a wonderful skirt, all decorated in soutache trim. Note her wonderful wig with her darling little frisettes. Individual costumes were an important feature in this special exhibit, such as this Romer dress and jacket with its two-tone trim, a masterpiece. Ah, a zinc-bodied roamer. Beautiful bisque with glass eyes and swivel neck. Dressed as a lady in her 1868-1869 suit. Perfect for promenading. But what a face. Look at the beautiful eyelashes and eyebrows, beautifully painted. Her friend, in a beautiful soutache suit, also has glass eyes and a curly mohair wig. Again, a wonderful face, beautifully painted. Friends forever. Sisters. I think it's time now to move on to a magical shop. The great French writer Victor Hugo wrote about this magical place long ago. He wasn't the only one that visited. The Imperial Princess Mathilde Bonaparte also visited this great shop. A curiosity. And while she was there, she purchased a doll. And here is the doll. An Eugène Barrois. A wonderful piece. This is a truly historic doll. Being the only doll in the exhibit that was owned by a princess, 
She has a ruby and gold ring on her finger. But what a wonderful face. Very, very sweet, but yet very knowing. Shall we move on? Another doll from this wonderful shop is Mademoiselle Louise, an original mini print file suit with wonderful trim and buttons and pagoda sleeves. Totally original. 1865. She has a wonderful little face, very, very childlike. She is what we call an enfantine, about a 12 or 13 year old. Speaking of shops, many of the shops at this period had their own little books, not unlike the modern Barbie doll, where you could look at what they had for sale. They were little dream books, photographic images. A little automaton bicycling. Mary had a little lamb. Police Chanel on a donkey. Mary had a little lamb again, popular. Bicycle rider again. Maison Levard. Mademoiselle Celine. In this special exhibit, one really had to look carefully at each item because you might miss something. This is one of my favorite dolls in the collection. Look at those wonderful hands. She has a wonderful gutta percha and leather body. Very, very interesting combination. But look at that face. Very different. Her hair is actually rooted in wax. She is 18 inches, so she's a small doll, what we would call a size four, a character face. Look at the molding around the eyes, but the real surprise is her mouth. She has an open closed mouth with a full set of teeth and a tongue tip. Shall we look at some accessories? Look at this box set with the very, very rare glove stretcher on the far right and a shoehorn, all beautifully outfitted in a box. Perfect scale for a 17, 18 inch doll. Mademoiselle Violetta. We were very fortunate to have dolls in the special exhibit that had provenances. This doll was once owned by the daughter of the first president of the Republic of France. Violetta is a bisque shoulder head with blue glass eyes. Maison Guillard, the finest shop of them all. Mademoiselle Marie. What a beauty. Standing 17 and a half inches tall, Mademoiselle Marie was made by Francois Gautier. Look at that wonderful face. Very unusual. Marie has a parade of clothing from the year 1868. Skirts had never been larger. She has frocks from day wear to afternoon with all the trimmings, hats, jewelry, accessories of all kinds. She even has a little doggy. This cotton print is one of my favorites. Note the little hinky in her pocket. A beautiful silk reception gown. Black and white stripes were all the rage at this era. And a very rare labeled hat. And again, look at this wonderful princess line 
reception gown with beautiful buttons and bows and trim. Oh, look at those booties, all hand embroidered. And that wonderful little vinaigrette. And a toothbrush. A prayer book and sleeve garters. But here's her favorite of all, her ball gown, created with silk, gauze, ribbon, and soutache trim. Soutache wasn't just for suits, it was also a decoration for ball gowns. But my favorite of all is her Eugenie Blue promenade suit. Ah, and her fan, this was already a hundred years old when Marie was brand new. This was like a party float going down the boulevards in Paris. And her little pork pie hat with the chicken feather decoration. And a wonderful pitcher and bowl in the elfinware style. And a muff again in chicken feathers. Note her little tiara. Oh, and you have to keep your hands warm. A beautiful muff. Hot water bottle. And all the white works that any French fashion doll would have to have. And a writing crop. Very rare accessory. And in case she has a problem, she's got a lice comb and toothbrush. Look at her emerald earrings. My favorite. Her necessaire with a wonderful shoehorn and a typical dolly fan. Butterflies are free. She has pendants and brooches and bracelets and a wonderful beadwork sewing basket. If you look at her long enough, she will hypnotize you. I promise. And of course, the rarest thing of all, true friendship. Born in Germany, but raised in France. This wonderful little Simon and Halbig teenager. Although German, she has many, many French sensibilities. Such as her body and her fabulous French clothes. Look at that little mini print and that splendid Suchash trim. If we could only buy it by the yard today and a wonderful face. Simon and Halbeck made some of the most beautiful dolls ever. Maison Jesland. Mademoiselle Eugenie. One of my favorites. Look at this amazing face. A beautiful fan with chicken feathers and silk. Although she's a lady face, she's dressed as a teenager. Beautiful cobalt blue eyes with a smiling mouth. Should we move on to Blampois Senior? The Chinas. These are some of the last Enfantine dolls in the special exhibit. Last but not least, look at that lovely china face. If we didn't have one, we had two, following the manner of Hire and Romer. Ah, the bisque shoulder plates. We can date this wonderful girl from her costume, which is 1868. Very, very simple, watered silk, 
a ball gown. And we were very lucky to have one of the molds for the Blampois dolls. Governesses are always a favorite for French fashion doll collectors. Here we have a bisque shoulder head with blue cobalt eyes and a matching baby. What a beautiful face, very trustworthy. Polka dots were also the rage in this period. Maison Eugène Barrois, the African governess. Not only is black beautiful, black is very rare in the world of French fashion dolls. Particularly when you have a doll that has its own specific mold, such as this masterwork. Note her wide nose, her open mouth with a full set of teeth, beautiful lips, and beautiful coloring. This doll is 17 and a half inches tall, but look at that molding. If that weren't enough, we had two. We had the swivel neck version and the shoulder head version. Same face, just different necks and shoulders. Again, a fabulous face. Ah, the Empress of France, the Muse of France. Here's another fabulous portrait of the Empress. Note the smile. The ratio between the nose and the lips are typical on a portrait doll of Empress Eugenie. Fabulous original clothing. Here's a favorite, another version, same mold, different treatment. Beautiful bisque arms and a stunning face. Look at the full lips and the color of the eyebrows, very unusual to find in China paint. Ah, let's go to the far, far east. It's so far east, it's a pretend place. It's the land of chinoiserie. This wonderful doll has a wooden articulated body with a fantasy costume, has nothing to do with reality. It's a mood, a mood of exoticism. And the bisque, tinting, so unusual. Everybody loves candy, and everybody should love horses. Ah, look at that. A candy container and a beautiful lady riding her horse side saddle with a fabulous riding crop. Beautifully costumed. Original wig with all the decorations still intact. And look at her top hat. This costume exhibits masculine and feminine. Shall we look at a play doll now? Meant for play, this wooden bodied doll is 18 inches tall, wearing a tartaned costume. But here's the real treat, that beautiful face. Often confused with bruise, this is not a brew product, but look at those beautiful eyelids, lovely eyebrow painting, and beautiful mouth. Mademoiselle Lily. 
The magazine La Poupe Modèle had their own doll with a backstory, and her name was Lily. Everyone loves a bride. This beautiful bridal gown from 1865 has its original Chantilly laced, also known as blonde lace, intact, festooned with beautiful beads. Look at that face. Pale bisque. They're so hopeful. The wonderful gentleman is original sanitary fair doll. But look at her. The exotic. Cover your eyes. Look at this wonderful harem girl. A beautiful portrait face with a molded bust with special details. Beautiful glass eyes. Unique one-of-a-kind arms and feet. But to top it all off, she's on a tufted candy box. You open it up and Turkish delights would be found within. This is a true rarity. Ah, the classic Radicke and Cardinier poupe statuette with bare feet attached to a candy box. Note her little chubby knees. This body came with at least four separate head styles. This piece is a classic by Francois Gautier. Monsieur Marie Crochet. Yes, he was a man. This is a fabulous doll, a wonderful costume with blonde lace, beautiful satin, but the real treasure here is this incredible face. This is a portrait face. I believe that it's a portrait doll of Mathilde Bonaparte. Notice those beautiful eyes. They look like they're glass, but they're painted. This is a masterwork. Dogs were plentiful in the special exhibit, but there were a few cats, too. Maison Simone. Mademoiselle Simone. Photographic evidence proves that this is a creation that was retailed by Maison Simone. Although they didn't make dolls, they certainly sold them in 13 locations on the Rue de Reveille. Leon Casmar Brew. The classic smiler. The Brew Poupée is the most commercially successful portrait doll of the Empress of France of all of them. She is the star. This wonderful doll has original necklace, earrings, wig, even the hair ornamentation. But my favorite thing of all is this fabulous dress. This is a dress that is associated with the brew company. It came in four different color combinations. But who doesn't love monochromatic? Ah, speaking of monochromatic, look at these tiny little brews. Red and cream, beautiful original blonde lace, wonderful trim that we'd all love to have by the yard. I'll take a hundred. These are tiny petite dolls. And this one 
in this wonderful brew suit from about 1875. We can see the Bebe style is already happening. Original wig set with all the decorations in the hair still after all these years. One of my favorites is this brew doll. Look at the photograph of the child and here she is today. A beautiful face, a little bit different. She is a teenager. And note the beautiful brew arms. But look at that face. And those hands. Another wonderful brew doll in the special exhibit was this smiler. She's a tri-colored eye brew, meaning that she has three different colors in her eyes. But what's so special about this doll is she came down through the family of the brews milliners, the people that made their chapeaus. She's in a perfect state of preservation. The girl on the right is a girl and the lady on the left is a lady. Look closely. In this exhibit, there was another tricolored eye brew. This one, a size G on a leather body with its original wool and cotton suit. Look at this beautiful face. This is a model that was marked on the forehead Deposé. They have a distinctive look, very, very sharp. Many collectors do not realize that French fashion dolls had a baby hood. Yes, they were babies. Girls loved to play christening, and after their French fashion doll was christened, they would then take and shorten the baby dress and create either a girl's dress or a lady's dress. This wonderful doll still has her christening dress intact. What fashionista doesn't love costumes? Here we can see what an original brew costume's colors originally were. Bright, purple, lavender, shocking pink. Look at that original trim and the ribbon decoration. This is an about 90% true color. Here they are. Innovation is essential to success. Here you have the classic brew, a 10 inch Smiler, a wee one. But here's the surprise. Asleep, awake. This is a two-faced brew. And again, another classic brew. Here's a display tip. If you have one, get yourself a wonderful mirror so that you can see both faces at the same time. Imperial. Here are the Imperial dolls. This beautiful gown of satin and blonde lace is a triumph. But look at that fabulous Dahor face. A swivel neck with her original jewelry and very, very rare brown eyes. Most dehors are not found with brown eyes. Her boyfriend of the day is not a dehors, but we can see that Pierre Jumeau took a little artistic license on his doll to make it look dehorish. Fabulous face with painted mustache, the 
look of those scowling eyebrows. And wonderful artifacts, such as this fragment from the Empress's dressing table from the Palace of Fontainebleau. Another portrait doll of the Empress. This model with blue eyes and a little bit different neck mechanism. A stunning face. In the world of French fashion dolls, a good man is hard to find. But if you can find one, let's hope it's a dehors man. This is a wonderful bisque head with a applied mustache and goatee. Look at that amazing face, the amazing decoration of the eyebrows, the upper eyelids, the sculpting. This is a masterwork. And wonderful accessories for a male doll. Umbrellas. Cigars. Shaving implements. Pipes. Hats and the original hat box with lock and key. But here's my favorite. In a beautiful velvet suit. And let's face it, boys love guns. Look at this face. And look at this face. This face has the painted, molded mustache. He is a one of. It's time for us to move on. Let's look at a heavenly doll, a sister of St. Vincent de Paul. This fashion doll is 20 inches tall, dressed in her original habit of the Order of St. Vincent de Paul. This doll has an absolutely fascinating provenance. She has traveled all over the world, from Paris to Brazil and to the United States of America. This is just part of her provenance. There are many, many sheets of paper giving this doll her wonderful history. She's one of our larger fashion dolls in the exhibit, and she's a bisque shoulder head. Now we should look at Mademoiselle Hattie. She is the exact opposite of the sister of St. Vincent de Paul. She is a fancy lady in her original costume, all beautifully piped. Her hair in its original set with her wonderful hat and beautiful jewelry. And we know her name is Hattie because she has a pin that says Hattie. Now let's have a look at Janetta and Annetta, a pair of identical twins. complete in every way. Original dresses, wigs, shoes, jewelry. Identical. Spectacular bisque with beautiful painting. Something that the Gautier firm is known for. Ah, the painted eye. It's quite unusual to find a French fashion doll from the 1880s era with painted eyes. They had gone out of fashion, but they are spectacular. Look at the size of these eyes. They're almost wraparound. Fantasy dolls. We could say that this is a provincially dressed Gautier doll, but it's most likely one of the Four Seasons perhaps autumn, but she could be from the region of Burgundy. More research needs to be done here. Let's have a look at a couple of cuties in their original box. Here we have a little Gautier man dressed as a groom on his wedding day and his bride. They were housed long ago in this little band box with their little lamb. Now the significance of that, I don't know. Shall we look at the help? We love occupational dolls. And here's a wonderful study group of Gautiers dressed in occupations. We have the governess with her charge. 
there's a little baby. A lovely face with painted eyes. And a wonderful French nanny. Although this lady could definitely double as a wet nurse. This gentleman is not a French fashion doll. A French paper mache from the World War I era. Now, let's have a look at a grand governess. This Gautier doll has beautiful painted eyes and a magnificent costume. And she has a little German charge. Look at that dewy bisque. Let's have a look at the men of the sea. In the 19th century, these two gentlemen would have been easily available at any seaside resort to buy as a souvenir. But what's so special about these gentlemen is they have wonderful implements. Look at that beautiful face with those big paperweight eyes. Look at those charming little bushy eyebrows. But it's the tableau that sets them off. Beautiful colors with wonderful antique fish barrels. It's time to look at Louis Doliac. One of my favorite French fashion dolls, this doll has a distinctive face. To our knowledge, this is the only known mold that they used. This doll had a wonderful articulated wooden body and a beautiful costume of red and white polka dots with a beautiful chain link decoration. As a collector, it's worth taking the time to study this face as the heads are not marked. George Most. Very rare doll. This boy has an open closed mouth with two sets of teeth and a tongue tip. He looks like he's stepped right out of a Dickens story. But there you see that wonderful face. We were so blessed in this special exhibit to have two dolls created by George Most. Note this model with her wonderful little dimples in her cheeks. Automaton are not technically dolls, but we made an exception for this wonderful pair of waltzing French fashion dolls. Dressed in their 18th century costumes with beautiful powdered wigs, festooned, curled, bedazzled, Here's her wonderful cavalier with his plumed hat. They danced the night away. Mystery makers. Some of the dolls in this special exhibit, we will never know who made them. We can only guess. Perhaps this doll is a roamer, maybe not. But it's a beautiful face, seldom seen. Note the wonderful lip painting. Here's another one. Again, your guess is as good as mine. But there's no guessing that she had a wonderful mini print enfantine dress, beautiful bisque arms, and a wonderful face, classical. Maison Jumeau, the kings of doll makers. Pierre and Emile Jumeau. La Classique Jumeau. Look at that incredible 1860s gown. Trimmed in Chantilly lace. Look at the beautiful hands. And look at that beautiful face. Hello, gorgeous. I never tire of this wonderful face. The classic Jameau French fashion doll came in many different sizes. Here's the 16 inch size. In her original trunk with her marked shop label on her trunk and on her body. 
This doll was displayed in the special exhibit with her original trousseau of clothes and her wonderful accessories in the 1870s style in mint condition. Lillian and Philippe Ballantine. Philippe is not a jumeau, but Lillian is. Philippe is a blampois on her bisque shoulder head, and his bride Lillian is a jumeau classique. Look at her wonderful face. Very expressive, with blue cobalt glass eyes. Dewy bisque. Here's Lillian's sister, Delia, as a young girl. She is a 14-inch classic jumeau from the Pierre Jumeau era. Here's a little wee jumeau. This is a tiny, tiny 11-inch jumeau French fashion doll shop card alert look at that and the ever popular midnight blue and black darling little face topped with a pork pie hat here we have an all original girl from the 1895 period we can see the bebe in her World Exposition Model. These wonderful dolls were created for world fairs such as Philadelphia, Boston, Paris. Look at that beautiful portrait face. Amazing glass eyes, beautiful painting. Look at those lips. The Queen of Madagascar. In my opinion, this doll is Emile Jumeau's masterpiece. This did make him the king of doll makers. Very few of these dolls are known to exist. Look at that beautiful skin color. Amazing lips, beautiful details of the eyes, lavender shadow. A fantastic item. These dolls are quite large. It's time for us to turn around and look at this wonderful display in the center of the gallery. The Opulent Era Case. Let's have a close look. Let's start with the Louis Doliac in a beautiful ball gown, topped off with a beautiful tiara and jewelry. Oh, look at this wonderful hand mirror. This is a princess line dress, meaning it's only in one piece, laced up the back. And of course, the beautiful Doliac face. Ah, look at these fans, painted by Madame Pompadour's court painter, Boucher. These little miniatures are incredible. Look at the painting. They're beautiful on the front, and they're beautiful on the back. Somebody has to do the cleaning. Here's another Doliac doing housework. Look at the wonderful face. And she has a darling little baby. Gorgeous paperweight eyes. Furniture. Who doesn't love beautiful furniture for French fashion dolls?
this royal bed is soon going to be occupied by another Daliac and her little nighty. Again, study these faces. They're so distinctive. We should have a look at Barbie's great-great-grandmother, the Poupe Statuette. Look at her costume. Piped, buttoned, and ruched. A very unusual face. Note her bent arm. Crystal chandeliers. Oops, it looks like David forgot to make candles. And this wonderful set of furniture. Painted Renaissance Revival with its original silk covering. And little doggies, borzois. Men are hard to find. A wonderful little Gautier gentleman. Original clothes, top hat, and spectacles. Ah, a Gautier lady in her original gown, princess line, embroidered, pom pommed, and pleated. Look at those pleats, from light to dark. This is a masterpiece of a costume. Look at the embroidery. And she has a train lifter for that special occasion, a ball. Maybe her prince will come. The opulent era. Costumed in Regent Street, London. This darling little Jumeau gentleman from 1885 dressed to represent being presented to Her Majesty the Queen. French dolls dressed in London. Her Prince of Wales plumes are a little bit less than fresh, but they're still there. The Gilded Age. They gilded everything. Ah, one of my favorites in the exhibit. A 14-inch Antoine Rochard doll. These are so rare. Rarer than gold. Beautiful face, but note that little jewel in her breastplate. It's a Stanhope, a photographic image. A classic Pierre Jumeau doll. In a gown that's never been taken off. Classic Jumeau face. Beautiful paperweight eyes. Dewy bisque. We hope you've enjoyed this tour of the French Fashion Special Exhibit at the Toy and Miniature Museum. On behalf of myself and David Robinson, we want to thank you for spending this time with us and hope that you someday visit the Toy and Miniature Museum of Kansas City and all other public institutions that house wonderful doll artifacts. We've got to show up and show our support. Thank you very much.
Here we have some behind the scenes preparation for the opening night. David is a very good typist. And that's Elizabeth Ann Coleman, a legend in the world of dolls and fashions. Everything's negotiable. That's me. Most of the work was done beforehand, but some special items had to be done on site. Now let's go to the opening night party. There's Mary Harris Francis, one of the co-founders of the Toy and Miniature Museum. A wonderful friend. A great lady. Here's two of her buddies that are the color specialists. They've designed all the colors of the walls and treatments in the Toy and Miniature Museum. There's Barbara Marshall on the far left, another founder of the Toy and Miniature Museum. Rob Wynn, major dealer. Becky Moncrief, past president of the UFTC. Ah, champagne. This was a great night. Beautiful food. A night in the museum. There's Lynn Murray on the left, past president of the UFDC. The gallery is open. You can see Alice Leverett off there. There's David Robinson to the far right, Mike Circus, Ann Coleman, Ann Muirs, Margaret Kincaid, Karen Rockwell, There's Rachel Hoffman and her mother, Diane Hoffman. There's Sally Freeman. And there's Lucy Morgan, collector extraordinaire. There's Rachel Hoffman. And the party room. Look at that buffet table. It moves.
they know how to put on a party at the Toy and Miniature Museum. The UFDC crew. Mary Harris Francis loved a good time. There's the moving table again. Mary Harris Francis with her granddaughter. Jay Lowe and Connie Lowe. What a wonderful memories. <laughs>